All right, all of you shut up and listen. I know I've had a difficult relationship when it comes to the Steelers and Kenny Pickett since he was taken. It's very well publicized. I wasn't a fan of Kenny Pickett getting drafted. I'll put a few screenshots of tweets here that I'm sure all of you will definitely bring up after this video gets out. Now, I want to make it very clear, as I have for the past year, I have never had anything against Kenny Pickett, the guy. He seems like a stand-up dude, and I'm rooting for him to succeed. No, what I had a problem with was the fan base's treatment of Kenny Pickett and the reasoning why they wanted him in the first place. Had Kenny Pickett not gone to Pitt, no one would care that the Steelers drafted him, and in all honesty, the Steelers probably wouldn't have drafted him to begin with. It just felt like the Steelers were drafting the story rather than the player. And of course, that can be spun around and say, well... Being that the Steelers share facilities with the Pitt Panthers, they already had an in-depth look at Kenny, who he was as a quarterback, for five years. And maybe they liked what they saw. They had an in-depth look and more of a look than they had at any of the other guys. Therefore, they thought that he was the best guy. And you know what? That is a fair point to make. But that brings me back to where my anger and annoyance ultimately lied. And that was with the fans. And that sounds high and mighty of me. And I'm not trying to make myself sound like I am above anybody. But that's where it truly lied. It didn't lie with Kenny Pickett. It lied with the fans who were fans of Pitt football, saw their quarterback get drafted by the Steelers, and defended him no matter the cause. If Kenny made a good throw, it's because Kenny Pickett's great. He's the future. He's him. He's going to be an elite quarterback. He's already an elite quarterback. But if he played poorly, it was, man, Matt Canada is such a bad offensive coordinator. This is Mike Tomlin's fault. This is the offensive line's fault. This is the receiver's fault. It could not possibly be Kenny Pickett's fault. He's only a rookie. And that is where my biggest problem lied with the fans, with everything on Twitter. It was never about Kenny Pickett necessarily. It was about the fans and their treatment of him and the babying and the coddling. And eventually it just became exhausting as a Steelers fan, seeing it week in, week out day in day out so with that now all out of the way there was a lot on film to like from kenny pickett and there were obviously some things that need addressed in a bad light on kenny pickett and we'll get into it in today's watch the tape now this is the drive that kenny first got put in against the jets in week four this is a good throw that he makes to chase claypool it's just that nobody has been six five for no reason more than chase claypool because kenny puts it where it's supposed to be you look, see downfield there, Claypool, he has a one-on-one -on -one situation with the guy he's taller than. It hits him in the hands, and he just gets it ripped away from him. So I'm not going to put that interception on Kenny, because it was a good throw. It just so happened that Chase Claypool didn't haul it in. Now, this is my favorite Kenny play of the season. It's just a big balls play. You're going to see Quinn and Williams blow past both Mason Cole and Jalen Warren. Get right in the face of Kenny. He stands there. He takes the hit, delivers a strike to Pat Fryermuth to set Pittsburgh up inside the five-yard line, and they would eventually score on the drive. Great job by Kenny. Now, this is what happens when they allow Kenny Pickett to push the ball downfield. It's going to be a zone coverage look from the Dolphins. The cornerback is going to play deep. They're going to have that linebacker come over in the flat. George Pickens is going to be able to find a, a hole really quick right there. Kenny sees it, gets it over to him before the deep defensive back can get over and make a play and it's a gain of 30 yards good recognition good toss good play now we know kenny can move and he shows it off here against miami the play's going to kind of break down he's not going to see anybody and you know what find that hole right there punch it get some yards 16 yard gain sets pittsburgh up near the red zone now if there's one thing defenses hopefully have learned from last year it's that you don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with George Pickens with a smaller corner in the red zone. You're going to see it's a perfect throw by Kenny. Back shoulder. George makes a good adjustment to it. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Good job by both all around. Now, this is a play that I will be critical of Kenny for. Dolphins have seven guys in coverage. Deontay Johnson, near side, running an intermediate curl. And look, that defensive back is sitting on Deontay Johnson's curl. Kenny Pickett doesn't see him. He throws a pick. That's something that he just has to get better at. Because if they score there, they possibly win. And that possibly changes the course of their season and gets them in the playoffs. So just something that he has to recognize. This is arguably Kenny Pickett's best throw of the season. It's fourth and long. They need a completion and a first down to extend the drive. Pat Fryermuth is going to run a crosser over the middle. And Kenny is going to put it in the tightest of windows. Look at it right there. There's a perfect throw to extend the drive from Kenny. And again, this is another one of those plays that just makes you put your head in your palms because there's no reason for Kenny to throw this ball here. It ends up getting intercepted. You're going to see he has a lane right there. 
You know, Najee Harris running to the flat. It clears out a lane. He can just run right there. He'll pick up some yardage, play for another day. Instead, he throws it, going back shoulder for Deontay Johnson, and it gets picked off to end the game. All right, now this play here, just an incomplete pass to start the game against New Orleans, but watch Deontay Johnson at the top of your screen. Right about there. That should be a 75-yard touchdown. He's got a step. There's no safety help. And again, it's just little things like that that Kenny has to see. And he will. He's going to get better. And he did see it later on in the game because, again, let's go back to New Orleans. They're going to run a similar concept here. Deontay Johnson, the top of the screen. He's going to run a nine. He's going to get a step. This time, Kenny sees it, and he goes his way. And would you look at that? A big gain. So credit to him there for seeing his mistake, coming back to it, and learning from it and getting a big gain. I hope we see the Steelers use more of this type of concept in 2023 because it's effective. We're going to have Deontay Johnson run a post and then George Pickens run a crosser underneath him, free up some space. Kenny sees it, hits him, and it's easy yards just as the safety gets across. Good throw, good concept. I love it. I want more of it. Something else I want to see more of is more stat concepts like this because it's an easy way to get guys space who aren't very good at naturally creating their own. And Pickens uses it here, comes out of the stack, runs a corner, has a step, and it's a touchdown from Pickett. Their chemistry is already so good, and I cannot wait to see year two and what comes of it. And more George Pickens for you because, like I said, Kenny Pickett, George Pickens have such a chemistry already. Year two of both of them is going to be fun. Just play action here. And it's going to be George Pickens one-on-one -on -one down the sideline. Kenny throws it to the outside shoulder. And George makes a good adjustment to the ball, keeps both feet in. Great throw, great catch. All right, now back to the cons. We talked about something similar earlier in the Miami game, but we're going to see a receiver run a little out and in concept. Kenny's under pressure, kind of forces the issue. He doesn't see the middle linebacker creeping over throws it right to him and it's a turnover pittsburgh gets the ball back the very next play off of an interception of their own but again just little things that kenny has to get better at and recognition on those types of plays is one of them now this is just it's just clutch from kenny a minute and a half left take the lead against las vegas season on the line it looks off the safety george pickens coming across feeds the ball in there before the safety gets there touchdown pittsburgh they take the lead they go on to win the game. Good God in heaven, this is a good throw. So Kenny's going to take the snap. He's going to be rolling to his left. And he's going to see Fryer move 20 yards downfield. And while throwing to his left, he throws it across his body on a yarn. And Fryer makes the catch at midfield. Great, great job by Kenny. And Pickett was far from done on this drive. Because on the very next throw that he makes... He's going to hit Steven Sims, who's lined up in the slot. He's going to get a step around his man and come across the middle. Pick is going to fire it into that window. And just before he gets hit at the 23, he makes the catch and the Steelers keep moving. And last but certainly not least, Kenny Pickett's Mona Lisa throw of the season to keep the Steelers' playoff hopes alive, rolling all over the field, escaping a sack, he finds Najee Harris out of the backfield, fitting it in the smallest of windows to give the Steelers the late lead and the eventual win. Pickett, without a doubt, showed a ton in the final month, month and a half of the season. He only threw one interception in his final six games, and the Steelers went from 2-6, and six, a write-off season, to 9-8, and eight, and were the Jets beating a Skylar Thompson-led Dolphins team from getting into the playoffs from the most undoubted left for dead circumstances at midseason do i think that kenny pickett has the ceiling of an elite quarterback i do not do i think that he can be one of these tier three guys somewhat like Kirk cousins Derek carr somewhere in that in that tier yes yes i do And that does it for this edition of Watch the Tape. If you want to check out more content from this channel, me and Kevin Adams from the Steel Here podcast on Barstool Sports did an all-time Pittsburgh Steelers draft on Black and Gold Thursdays. So go watch that. That is available on this channel. Listen to the Pump Fake. Watch more of the Watch the Tape series. It's a lot of fun. We've done ones on Trevor Lawrence and Josh Allen, so please go watch those. Subscribe, like, comment, all that YouTube stuff. We'll see you soon.